Welcome back. Later in the show, we will bring you a special report on the possible risks to swimmers posed by beach renourishment program. It's an important issue you will see nowhere else. And my guest once again is Democratic leader of the Florida House, State Representative Keani McGee. Uh, Representative, again, thank you very much for coming in. <laughs> Always a pleasure. I, I want to I want to talk to you about Medicaid expansion, but before we get there, you introduce a bill, and you actually have some support also from Senator Marco Rubio, who's working on it, and others are working on it. We've seen it in California. Do you think that college athletes, at least we should be discussing whether or not college athletes should be compensated? If the NCAA is making all this money, why not some of it going to the athletes? Yeah, and let's be absolutely clear, and you're absolutely correct. When it comes down to using a person's name, image, and likeness as it relates to uh, uh, student athletes, I do believe that the NCAA should not prohibit them from actually entering into contracts that will allow for them to make a living. It seems like the governor is also supportive of the this. The governor su uh, supports the concept. As a matter of fact, we, I've spoken with quite a few uh, uh, di uh, athletic directors across the state. I've spoken with quite a few students, uh, athletes, and they truly like it. They truly said this has been a long time coming. But at the end of the day, that's, let's be absolutely clear. This is not going to be an easy fight, but I can tell you this, many states are actually proposing the same type of legislation that I'm proposing that would allow for uh, student athletes to be, receive compensation when their name, images, or likeness are being used uh, uh, by third parties. And I'm assuming that if this passes like it did in California, it then sets up a system where ultimately the courts will have to weigh in on some of this because this isn't going to be settled state by state. You're, you're, you're basically forcing the issue to be discussed about Listen, the NCAA right now can take this away from us at any given time. They could simply say, listen, if you're a college uh, athlete, we want to see fairness uh, for you also. We want you to participate in the fair market system also. We would now allow for you to participate uh, in contractual negotiations when your name, image, or likenesses are being used uh, for monetary gain. I want to talk about health care. The decision by the by former governor Rick Scott and the legislature not to engage in Medicaid expansion, we're seeing a new report that says that it's had some very real consequences, Correct. including potentially thousands of people, particularly elderly people, who would have been covered under under this Medicaid expansion that have since died as a result, they believe, of not receiving the health care that they needed. Um, there is also a move to try to put something on the ballot coming up that would force Medicaid right. expansion. There's also also an effort in the legislature to try to block that by Republicans. Talk to me about the decision not to accept Medicaid expansion, and is there any chance that it could come up this year in the session? Well, Nick Duran, our, our, our leading um, health care expert as a state representative, has filed legislation to deal with uh, Medicaid expansion. This is a question that must be dealt with head on. As you re referenced to, the article talked about close to three, almost 3,000 Floridians passed away over a three year, two to three year span because we refused, or in this case, Governor Rick, then Governor Rick Scott refused to accept Medicaid expansion. Let me Let's be absolutely clear. This is literally a life or death decision that must be answered upon and done in, in, in an orderly fashion. What we've seen over the years is a complete disregard for human safety and human life. And this is why Medicaid expansion must be dealt with at this particular junction in our life. And the last point I just want to make on this, which has always blown my mind, is this is simply bringing back to Florida <laughs> money that we've already paid to Washington, that basically the, the federal government would cover, I think in the initial years it was up to 100% and then it phases down to like 90%, but we're giving up money to go to other states by not covering our people. At minimum, we're giving up at least $42 million per year. That's, that, that is a, re, those are what I consider an opportunity to use those dollars to, uh, to offset other issues that the Florida is that Florida's actually doing. I want to say, uh, healthcare related, uh, we can expect that abortion is going to be uh, an issue. We've seen some, some states, Alabama, Mississippi, passing right. heartbeat bills. There's a heartbeat bill that's going to, that's going to probably be introduced that would essentially uh, uh, just about ban abortion in the state of Florida. Um, this is going to be one of those contentious election Correct. year issues. Is there, do you see that this is a bill that's going to make some headway this year? It's going to make headway, but it's, we're going to fight this thing as if we've, uh, similar to how we fought previous bills. We're going to make sure that Floridians understand what's at stake, and we're going to fight this with every with every ounce of energy that we have in our system. You realize the speaker, you know, it seems to be, you know, he's got a problem with uh, with abortion in terms of the way he's talked about it. Mm -hmm. He was sitting right where you were when he started referring to women as host bodies <laughs> in the discussion. You you know, that, that you can expect the speaker to probably be supportive of these bills. Well, he can be supportive, and he can do what he needs to do, but I can tell you as a leader of the, of the Democrats in the Florida House, 
we're going to stand our ground, we're going to f push back on this, and we're going to educate the public as to the detriments that this particular bill will have on our society. You know, you represent parts of South Dade as well. Uh, there's a bill or there's a measure that t is talking about driver's license for undocumented immigrants. Um, there's sort of bipartisan support among some sectors that, that believe that if we issue driver's license, there have been reports that have shown that it will decrease accidents, that it will, that it will have a net positive effect on actually saving taxpayers money. We're not talking about creating a new legal status for Correct. immigrants who are undocumented here, but at least giving them driver's licenses. Is that something that could pass this year? I believe so. If, if the opportunity is given, it should pass. Let's be absolutely clear. We're not simply saying that let's just give um, immigrants license uh, simply just to give them license. This is a, an opportunity for us to show the world that we can decrease crime, we can de decrease traffic accidents, and we can also bring them to the forefront, thereby allowing for them to participate in getting insurance, to making sure that when, they, when, when an accident occurs that they're, they're not leaving the scene. So at the end of the day, this is something I do believe can benefit Miami-Dade County overall. Uh, we only have about a minute left. One, one issue. I did want to sort of check in with you on is we've seen in recent years a number of attacks on Miami Dade's Home Rule Charter, which gives Miami Dade a yeah. greater ability to sort of control its own fate. I'm hearing a lot of rumblings from legislators that there's likely to be an attempt by some Republicans to introduce, a, uh, introduce amendments at the end of the session to take the airport and seaport away from the county and put it into an authority that the governor would appoint. Have you been hearing any talk like that? And would you, would you be supportive of taking the airport and seaport? away from the county? The short answer is no. Uh, in Tallahassee, Jim, as you are aware, we hear rumblings every day. But until something is put on paper and we actually see it and we're able to vote on it, then I'll be able to make a, a decision. But I can tell you right now, as it currently stands, the Home Rule Charter is our baby here in Miami-Dade County. That is what gives us the power to, to, to represent our people. All right, Keanu McGee, we'll have you back during the session. It's always a pleasure to have you in. Thank you very much. Up next, my special report on the unintended consequences of protecting our beaches. You'll want to see it, and we'll be right back.